Hello students, this is Oshini from Chinta.com. Today we will talk about a beautiful geometry problem from ISI B Star B Math entrance. We will learn a lot using this problem. And I'll also give you a challenge question in this video. If you can solve it, please put it in the comment section. There are two things that we will learn using this particular problem. How to use trigonometry to approach area problems and it is also an associated concept of Archimedean limits. So these are the two things that we will learn. Let's start. The question says, let's suppose you have a circle, any circle. We can assume that it's of radius 1. There is no harm assuming in that. It's not given in the problem. But this is for any circle. And there is a regular pentagon inscribed inside the circle and a regular pentagon circumscribed outside the circle. So, this is the regular pentagon inside the circle and this is the regular pentagon outside the circle. Here it is. So, some kids in our math olympiad programs get very confused by the word regular. So I want to define it very precisely. What does regular mean? What When is a proper polygon regular? Is it sufficient to say that all sides are equal? Well, you have to be very careful about it. If you just say all sides are equal, think about quadrilaterals. If all sides of a quadrilateral are equal, it can be a rhombus, which is not a square. That is not a regular polygon. So, for a polygon to be regular, it has to satisfy two conditions. All sides equal and all angles equal. Now, sometimes all sides equal would imply that all angles are equal. Example is a triangle. In a triangle, if all sides are equal, it's an equilateral triangle, so all angles would automatically be equal. But as we just saw, that's not the case for quadrilaterals. Here is the first challenge question. Is that the case for pentagons? If you take a pentagon, and if you say all sides of the pentagons are equal, or that pentagon is equal, can you directly deduce that all angles of the pentagon are also equal? If you, if you can solve this question, put it in the comment section. Alright, so for now we are assuming all sides are equal and all angles are equal. So there is a pentagon inside the circle. There is a pentagon outside the circle. What we want to do is to find out the ratio of areas the ratio of areas of these two pentagon. So, the ratio of pentagon inside, inscribed pentagon, divided by the circumscribed, circumscribed pentagon. How do we find this ratio? Okay. It's actually quite simple. All you have to remember is that the central angle is divided into five equal parts when you divide the pentagon into five equal tri triangles. So let's say this is the center of the circle. If I draw this line, so this angle here is simply 360 degree divided by 5, which is 72 degree, right? Notice that if I divide one triangular piece of these pentagon, so this pentagon is made out of five triangular pieces, if I divide one triangular piece by one triangular piece of the top pentagon, the outside pentagon, then I would be done. Because the area of the entire pentagon is just 
five times the triangular pieces right so five and five will cancel so just we have to divide the the area of the two triangular pieces and we will be done so all we have to find out it what is the area of this triangle and what is the area of this triangle or we have to find out the ratio of the areas of these two triangles okay so the first one this little triangle is very easy this is one this is one because they are radius of the circle so we use sine rule so the area of the triangle small triangle is half 1 times 1 times sine 72 degree that is the sine rule for computing area of a triangle half of product of two sides times the sine of the angle between them what is the area of this triangle well, it's a little bit more tricky but not very much if you take the area of this triangle this angle this total angle is 72 degree let me zoom it in so this is half of the angle which is 36 degree now you notice that this radius OP is the height of this triangle OP is the height of this triangle and it's bisecting the base AB so if AB is side length S then OP is bisecting you can do it by symmetry you can argue this by symmetry that AB is bisected by OP okay so if that is the case then this is suppose S by 2 and this is 1 OP is 1 the tan of 36 degree is S by 2 opposite by adjacent is 1 so this is S by 2 so the side length is 2 times tan 36 degree right side length means this one so what is the area of this triangle the area is half side length is 2 times tan 36 times the height height is 1 2 2 cancels so we have tan 36 degree so area of this big triangle is simply tan of 36 degree so we have found the area of the smaller triangle which is half of sine 72 area of the small triangle is tan 36 so let's now do the ratio of the two areas half sine 72 degree divided by tan 36 degree now we can use compound angle formulas here so it's half of 2 times sine 36 degree times cos 36 degree divided by sine 36 degree by cos 36 degree tan is sine by cos okay 2 2 cancels this this cancels so the final answer is cos square 36 degree this is the final answer the ratio of the top uh, the out inside pentagon divided by the outside pentagon is cos square 36 degree but I want to make a comment here this is a very interesting sub step of a much bigger problem the much bigger problem is how do you calculate the area of the circle area of circle because human beings when they started calculating areas they were able to calculate formulas for rectangles squares triangles polygonal shapes circle is difficult how do you figure out the area of a circle so one way was to check how many squares can you fit inside the circle like this how many one cross one squares and now once you are unable to do it you can break it down into smaller squares you know and try to fit in more squares 
and then you calculate the total area of the squares that is used to cover the entire circle. It is one way. This is sometimes known as method of exhaustion. You exhaust the entire region covered by the circle by regular pieces that you know how to calculate the area of. This is sometimes also known as the Riemannian technique. But there was another technique known as the Archimedean technique. And this is, this picture is a sub-step of that. What you do is that you fit inside and outside two polygons. In this case, the two polygons are pentagons. There is a pentagon inside, there is a pentagon outside. You fit in two polygons. You calculate the area of them. Now, of course, the smaller pentagon will have area smaller than the circle. The larger pentagon will have the area larger than the circle. But then you do it for the hexagon. We do it for the hep heptagon. We do, to do it for the next one. So you keep on increasing the sides of the polygon. And as you keep on increasing the sides of the polygon, something very magical happens. You get closer and closer to the area of the circle from the top and from the bottom. This is sometimes known as, known as the Archimedean method. So here is a challenge question for all of you. See the challenge. The challenge one. Do the same problem with hexagons. And challenge two. Can you find a general formula for n-gons? That means if you have a n-sided regular polygon. Can you find out the area of the inscribed polygon and the circumscribed polygon and check the ratio of those two areas? Ideally, the ratio of those two areas should converge to 1 because after all, they are all, both of them are approaching the area of the circle. So, a small problem, but it has so much history in it, so much beauty in it, so much deep ideas about areas and limit and convergence everything built into it very nice problem i hope you learned something if you are a student at math olympiad program at jiddah or isi cmi entrance programs at jiddah or physics or computer science whatever you're doing i hope you are learning it with some love and you are also attending the problem solving sessions very important attend five problem solving sessions a week more practice you have better you are off and finally I hope that you are also using the Panini 8 software, the Chinta problem solving software to get more practice. All the best. If you want to know more about us, check the link in the description. I will meet you in the next video. Bye.